Greetings to all of you, man. It is really a joy, it's a pleasure. It's my honor, as usual, to be greeting you and I always bring this message of emancipation to you by pointing you to look no other place but to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. Thus, the reason why I want to speak to you today concerning how Abdul taught Neville Goddard to call upon self. And that is what I really want to speak to you about. Now, before Abdullah could have taught Neville Goddard to call upon self, he also taught him that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. That the Bible is not literal, neither is the Bible secular history, and that the Bible is written symbolically, and it has no reference to anyone who existed thousands of years ago or to any actual event that would have taken place on earth thousands of years ago. He makes sure to let Neville know that from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 that it's all a great psychological jammer and that it all have to do with the human psyche. Also, he taught Neville that it, is, was, that it was his own thoughts that was creating his reality and that he can create his reality consciously. Therefore, seeing that it was a time of great depression around 1933 when Neville approached Abdullah concerning having a burning desire to travel to Barbados, Abdullah taught him to call upon self and to look to self because the self of man is God. And that God and man are one. And Abdullah was teaching never got at all of these things for over five years. But when the opportunity arises, it was time for him to put the practical to work and prove for himself the teachings that Abdullah was conveying to him. So Abdullah told Neville that he did not have to worry about how or when this trip would occur because he already in Barbados that it's an already it's already a fact and so he taught him also that there's no such a thing as a little pregnancy that if you are pregnant you're pregnant just allow the baby to grow and when the time of delivery comes you must give birth all of these things are written in the bible also for habakkuk chapter 2 tells you the same thing that when you have a vision that you must write down the vision and though the vision may tarry you must realize that it's for an appointed time and that it is sure because it's a law so he didn't Abdullah didn't tell Neville to look to politics or uh, politicians. He didn't tell him to look to the clergyman or turn to some religion. He didn't tell him to look to the bank for a loan. He told him to look to self and to use his imagination because imagination is God in man. So he instructed Neville to go to bed each night imagining himself sleeping in his mother's home in Barbados. So that was how he was going to call upon self. So my brother and my sisters, when you have a need, when you have a burning desire, whenever there's something in this life that you need, all you need is to learn to believe in yourself. Learn to call upon self. You're told to seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened until you ask. And it is given to you. How do you ask? You ask by calling upon self. You seek by calling upon self. You knock 
by calling upon self. You are the Lord and Master of your destiny because it is your own thoughts that is creating your reality. Therefore, you can create your reality consciously. And that is what Abdullah was teaching. Never God us and never would be able to teach that same thing to humanity. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, I can point you to look no other place but to look within yourself. You want to find the phenomena of life, you got to look within yourself. You want to find the answers of life, you got to look within yourself. And most of all, you're told that you are to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that you to design this world, that they will be added unto you. You'll be able to attract them unto you because you would, would have found the secret of creation and you'll be able to create your reality consciously. But of course, you must know what Luke 17, 21 says to you when it admonish you not to let anyone say, lo here or lo there, for the kingdom of God is within you. So when you fail to believe in yourself and fail to trust your imagination, you are defeating your own self and you're going against your own self. That is why whatever you should desire, you are to call upon self. Now the hardest thing for anyone in this world to come to realize is that they are the cause of everything that's happening in their life. Because many people fail to realize the law of cause and effect. Many people look at the effect and fail to realize that they are the cause. But my brother and my sisters, my encouragement to you, as Abdullah would have encouraged Neville, is to call upon self. For it wasn't until Neville began to call upon self and apply faith in his life that he was able to make that trip to Barbados, having no work and having no money. He was able to attract money. He was able to attract a new suit upon his back. He was able to attract a ticket to travel to Barbados and to sit at the bar and also to travel first class on the ship. And so, my brother and my sister, you want to live a lavish lifestyle? Call upon self. You want more money in your bank account? Call on self. You want to live in a better neighborhood? Call on self. You want to rock drive a luxurious vehicle? Call upon self. Whatever you design this world, you got to call upon self. Because the self of man is God and God is invisible. And when you call on the invisible, that which is invisible will materialize itself and become visible. Everything comes from spirit to thought. To Sorry, everything comes from spirit to matter. And it is in the form of thought. And so, my brother and my sisters, you told that the world became flesh and we handle him. It is you when you have your desire, which is your thoughts your ideas, your dreams, your goals. They are the expression of the things that you'll be able to contact by the five senses. So, when you are able to physically touch those things that you once desired, that was once invisible, and now visible, you realize that the world has become flesh. And you're now in contact with that which was once a thought or an idea. So that's what the Bible is really speaking about. It's not speaking about a man outside of yourself. It is not speaking of a man 2,000 years ago. No, the main character of the Bible is man's imagination. And when you can accept your imagination, then you can love yourself. Then you can embrace yourself. Then you can believe in yourself. And you will not get caught up by the systems that the world have placed to distract you from looking to your higher self and believing in your higher self. But my encouragement to you is to believe in yourself. My encouragement to you is to call upon self. You know today as you listen, listen to me, what are your needs? What is it that you would like to 
acquire in this world. It is easy. Call upon self. Look to your imagination. Just before you go to bed, see yourself having and being and doing that you so desire. Do it night after night and fall asleep in the assumption that it is so with thanksgiving in your heart and it will objectify itself in this three-dimensional world. So my brother and my sisters, all I'm just doing is just giving you the key to create your reality consciously. The key to realize that the creator is in you. Therefore, my brother and my sisters, there's nothing greater that I can give to you but the gift of freedom. Free yourself by accepting your true self and embrace your true self and use your consciousness to create your reality because the only real reality there is is consciousness itself. And we are all pure consciousness. Therefore, my brother and my sisters, make use of this wisdom. For it can only become wisdom when you apply it in your life. So be a hearer today and a doer also. Don't just be a hearer only. Be a doer also. So with that being said, my brother and my sister, I want to thank you very much for listening to me. I want to say to you, if this is your very first time that you're listening to me and what I'm saying, it makes sense to you and it's really encouraging you and resonating with you. I would like to say to you, if you haven't subscribed, I'd to subscribe, to like, to comment, or to share this video. But just before I leave you, I just want to remind you that this message I bring to you, that it is the single eye message of self-realization, of which Matthew 622 says that if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. And truly, my whole body was filled with light when the single eye open within me and I wake from the dream of life and come to understand that when the Bible says that you shall change from mortal to immortality in a twinkling of an eye, that that twinkling of an eye is an opening of an eye. And when it happens is when you will hear that an earthly wind after that great and mighty shaking and you will ascend like a fiery being and burst your crown chakra, yes, you will come out of your skull and become invisible and realize your body is the tomb in which Christ is buried and you will have the new birth experience and you will tell your story to the rest of humanity and some would think that you are crazy nevertheless my brother and my sister that's why i always tell you my story and i was putting my hand right above my crown chakra and give you the symbol of the single eye saying to you that when you have the experience you realize that it is the writing of the s-u-n in a s-o-n and that it is the dawning of a new day in your life for the sun parallels the human imagination, and the human imagination parallels the sun. For without the sun, there is no life, and there is no light. And without the human imagination, there is no anything made that was made. And you're told in Psalms 84:11 that the Lord thy God is a sun and a shield, and no good thing will he withhold from you. And truly, the sun has never withhold any good thing from humanity. For the sun is what powers all of humanity and gives all of humanity its energy. Then in Malachi chapter 4 and verses 2, you're told... That the Son of Righteousness shall arise in you with healing in his wings. And truly, the Son of Righteousness has risen in me and I'm bringing healing to all of humanity. Pointing each and every one to look inwardly and to use your mind power, which is your solar power, your sun power, your God power, your creative power, which is actually sexual power. Use that power to achieve your every desire. So with that being said, I want to say peace, love you all, I'm out.